Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Council of the Town of Oakville. Uh, Madam Clerk, do we have any regrets tonight? We have no regrets, but Councillor DeMoff uh, may be late for the meeting. Oh, yeah, the uh, GO train uh, issues. Um, uh, Council, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Councillor Adams, it wouldn't be a meeting without a declaration. Good evening. Um, I, I would like to declare a, an interest in item 5 and item C1 as my spouses employed at TDL uh, group who have an interest in those two items. Uh, and for the moment, I'd also like to declare an interest in item 3 as I've just seen a uh, letter uh, which includes an interest by TDL group in an element of 3, although um, my preliminary understanding is that it may not really be an interest, but... So d let me make sure I heard you correctly. Item two? Item three. Item three? Item three, five, and C1. Okay, it's the, the last one I couldn't hear. C1, the confidential C1. item. C1, thank you very much. C1. All right. Then uh, perhaps with that out of the way, we could move into Committee of the Whole. Councillor Johnston moves it. Councillor Kahn seconds it. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. And our first item is a consent item, and that is the subdivision agreement for Timson Holding at uh, north of Dundas Street and west of Sixth Line. And uh, Councillor Noel, I think I see. Yes, you do. Uh, Your Worship, I'd be happy to uh, give you a motion uh, that's uh, contained in the staff recommendation on that report. Thank you. Discussion? All in favor? Councillor Elgar. I just want, is there anyone from the Timpson here tonight, I wonder? Be there anyone present from Timpson? There is someone from Timpson. I was just wondering whether we could get assurance that Clause 65 they agree with in the, uh, in, in the uh, site agreement, that there's no, no surprises afterwards. And it has to do with the tree planting, where we're at the town still coming up with how to plant the trees in the boulevards. And I just want to make sure they're in full agreement with what we have in here. They're nodding. One is nodding. One is saying, give me a minute. Good evening. Chris Matson representing Timpson. And uh, yes, it's in here. We've agreed to. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks. Any others? Going once, going twice. Now I'll call the vote. All in favor? Opposed to Finney. It carries. Thank you, Councillor. Item two, public hearing item. Public meeting report, proposed zoning bylaw amendment, William and Maureen Brown. And we welcome Rob Thun to the podium, who will summarize the report before you for the benefit of the public. Mr. Thun. Uh, thank you, Mayor Burton and members of council. Uh, tonight before council is a zoning by zoning bylaw amendment application submitted to rezone 112 Ulster Drive from R02 to R03. The effect of the application is to facilitate a future severance application of the existing lot to create one additional lot. Uh, the report can be found on page 71 of tonight's agenda and uh, for council and the public's information. The purpose of tonight is to introduce the planning application in conjunction with the statutory public meeting. Council may hear public delegations on the application, ask questions or clarification, or ask questions of clarification and identify planning issues. The report is to be received and no decisions are to be made tonight. The site is located at the end of Ulster Drive on the west uh, side. As you can see from the air photo, the subject property is highlighted in red. Surrounding land uses are residential. Oh, it's not up there. Oops. Thanks, Dana. Um, from the livable Oakville perspective, the site is designated a low density. Uh, within the staff report on page 77 of the agenda or page 7 of the staff report, 
you will see several related policies from the Livable Oakville plan related to the subject property. From a zoning perspective, the site is zoned RO2 presently. With regards to the proposal, as stated above, the applicant wishes to rezone 112 Ulster Drive from RO2 to RO3 to facilitate a future severance. The existing dwelling is to remain. The proposed new lot and dwelling are proposed to be located between the existing dwelling of 112 and uh, uh, 104 Ulster Drive. Um, details related to both the severed and retained lot can be found on page 73 of the agenda or on page 3 of the staff report. With regards to public notification and public input to date, a public information meeting was held on February 8th of this year. A notice of tonight's meeting was mailed out to residents within 120 meters of the site and also placed within the Oakville Beaver. You will note that within the appendices to the staff report, there are also public comments that we have received through the process for Council's information, which will be reviewed as part of the technical review and the forthcoming recommendation report. So in conclusion, Your Worship and members of Council, staff put forth the following recommendation as seen on the screen for Council's consideration. As just stated, a future recommendation report will be submitted for Council's consideration. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Mr. Thun. Council, do you have any questions? Alrighty then. Uh, Madam Clerk, I understand there's some registered delegations. Uh, yes, we have a delegation from Troy Wilson. Is there, Mr. Wilson, would you please come to the podium and share your information with Council? Welcome. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Burton and Council. <clears throat> and please bear with me. Uh, last time I was here, it was six years ago. <laughs> um, it's changed a bit um, electronically. I don't have to place anything. I, just, I can just speak, correct? Or I don't have to place any documents here. Any? This is for just review. I'm just going to speak. That's an overhead camera should you require okay. that. No problem. But um, otherwise, just take your time. And okay. if you have any questions at all, just ask. We're here to make it easy, not hard. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> uh, in the document, um, I'm, uh, my name is Troy Wilson. I'm a resident of Ulster Drive. I live at uh, 105 Ulster Drive. I live across from the property. On page 89 of the, of the report, I submitted to um, the planning department um, a detailed explanation of um, some of my concerns around the rezoning. Um, I'm not going to go through that in detail. That's going to be a waste of council time. You can read that at your own leisure. But I, I did want to uh, point out a few things that are fairly important to me where I, I, I didn't have as much understanding. So I wanted to give you a little bit of history. Um, I've been a resident of, of Oakville for about 13 years now. And I've been involved in planning development processes uh, three times. Um, the property immediately to the west of me, to the east, the Brissick property, to the west when, when uh, Kevin Flynn was, uh, was helping support us, and now the Brown development. And, and part of um, coming here today was uh, trying to get an understanding of um, how, not the process itself, but some of the things that, that came clear to me when I looked at the uh, application and, and how I thought things should be applied. The first is, uh, I believe strongly, that the Livable Oakville Plan that's been um, put forth by Council is a wonderful document. Uh, it's, it's really well written and uh, I like the fact that actually it's, it's um, empowered um, your, uh, the, the Council and the Town of Oakville to take care of itself when it comes to development and growth of, of Oakville. Um, specifically, um, I liked what uh, Mayor, Mayor, you said uh, to uh, at one of your meetings was, we are of course in Oakville, are a city that calls itself a town uh, and acts like a village. Uh, I, I'm from the village of Brawny. That's my, my town, town center, so it, it hits very nice to me. And, and because we work together in Oakville, it seems at times that we are safe in Sunny Island and sometimes savage, stormy seas. I, I'm not trying to quote you for any reason, but it was one of those emotional things that I felt, again, when I've, I've always been in this, this uh, development phase. Uh, I know that development has to happen in Oakville. We need, we need replenishing. We need to add to uh, that ability. Um, but again, I, I, I get worried a bit when um, I have to go into the depth of the livable Oakville to try to find out what is the precedent by which we begin to develop um, a household lots or residential lots and begin to subdivide them. 
Um, I've seen vacant lots on both sides of me being developed into two houses, into four houses, reasonable developments uh, supported by town planning. And again, I'm trying to understand just some of the details and some of the, um, the precedents that we're going to set when we start taking houses and beginning to infill backyards and start putting it into backyards in my neighborhood. Um, I do get concerned, and my wife and, as well, that um, underutilized lots will then become backyard properties with swimming pools and, and landscaped areas, and you start asking yourself, well, what's our neighborhood going to change to? Um, I do, and my wife do believe that um, underutilized lots or places where there's opportunity to develop outside or inside intensification areas are definitely what we need to be doing. Um, when we first moved to this area, we liked the character of it. We liked the village uh, surroundings. When we first came here, we, we decided to either live in North Oakville or in South Oakville, and we, we knew how the planning was. North Oakville, uh, low density as well, but a, a different type of low density. Um, we chose a, a, what we consider to be a beautiful court that allowed us to happen that. Um, the important thing for us is that, um, and I, I said this as well to, uh, to my councilman, Ralph uh, Robinson, we, we had a, a simple meeting and I, I've been emotional because I said, uh, I really like the fact that we're, we're maintaining a cha town charter. Uh, it's one of those things that really makes Oakville special. And I, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of an emotional thing for me. And in a way, I've been working with the town and with Ralph to try to maintain that town perspective to make sure that we're not engulfed in a, in a city. We, we, we looked in Otobicoke when we came back from, our, uh, from living in London, of all places, in a little village, and we looked in Otobicoke, we looked in Mississauga, and we landed here in Oakville. Um, we know that the rezoning or the rezoning of land will probably meet uh, the requirements for the severance because technically it seems to be okay. There's a few questions we still have with planning on, on whether or not some of the, the boundaries make sense, but the real question here is whether the Little Oakville uh, plan applies here. The application speaks a lot to the, OM, the, um, the, um, the Ontario Municipal Plans, the other laws, and the question here is, is where does Livable Oakville begin to define what a vacant lot is when people can be, begin to start dividing up their, their, their properties and start building a, a more intensification area. So in rela relation to this proposal, we are not in favor of the rezoning. Uh, we'd like you to consider the Livable Oakville plan as really a strong guideline to help guide the town planners on to whether or not you want to begin to allow that to happen in the various neighborhoods that exist. So, um, thank you very much for your time. So thank you for your information. Uh, if, do I understand you correctly then that the changing of the zoning f to RO3 is the concern f for you? It is, yes. Okay. Any other questions, Council? Thank you very much for your information. Madam Clerk, the next delegation. Next delegation is um, Mr. Jones, I believe. Alan T. Jones. No. Alvin T. Anybody? Um, here we go. We haven't been able to decipher your last name, sir. Uh, Jones, J O N E S. Oh, perfect. All right, Easy. thank you very much. If you would address the microphone a little bit, it would assist everybody to hear you. Okay. And thank you for coming forward, and Council looks forward to your information. Okay, I live at uh, 131 Mississauga Street. Okay, and the proposed uh, development, I'm on the last piece of property that runs up. Uh, there's a creek that runs through my property. Um, it's used to run across the road and all the way up, but with the development that uh, kind of just sloped land and it's opened at the back. I just wanted some type of assurances as what's going to happen at the back piece of uh, property. At the moment, it's uh, a little backed up, but not like it'll be in the spring for sure. Thank you. So, so your caution or your information for us is there's a creek to be considered in any development of this land, and you mm -hmm. want to make sure that the yes, creek it, isn't harmed? Uh, well, I certainly want to make sure that the creek doesn't back up and there's a, there's a waterway 
allowed for. I was indicated somehow that so a flooding issue. Put a cistern in and it would run through, but. So you also have a you you, you want to be you, you um, you're concerned about any possible flooding coming from it? Then? Uh yes. Okay. Yeah. And at the back, it uh, often floods because it comes down to a very, very narrow, so okay. the whole All right. of that ravine ran through the property into the culvert. Okay. Well, thank you very much for bringing that information forward. Uh, any other questions, Councillor Robinson? Your Worship, first of all. I, I presume everybody's aware that Mr. Jones is talking about item six on tonight's agenda. Um, That's what he was registered to speak about. Oh, well, because uh, he, we... Uh, well, you, you called his name, but he wasn't registered to speak to, uh, to Ulster. He was registered to speak to for the Fernbrook Lakeshore Road application. That's right. Well, we'll take six. your comments for item number six. Uh, and it's, it's, it's our error here at the That's head That's okay. Desk. Now I have a question for Mr. Jones. Well, away you go. Uh, uh, sir, thanks for coming out and presenting your concerns. Uh, I hope you can, uh, let me ask, I got to ask a question. Are you able to stay long enough till we deal with this item in order oh, yeah. that the director of planning can explain everything? I was surprised everything. to hear my name. Yes, I will be, I will be here. We will have it explained to you at the appropriate time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Somehow we misread that for a two, but we'll try harder. <laughs> All right, are there any other members of the public here with information for council on item two, the uh, application uh, under discussion? Yes, sir, would you come down and share your name and your information with council? Hi, my name's uh, Christopher Crank. Um, I'm here representing my mother, Mary Crank, who lives at 99 Ulster, directly across from where the new property will go, or the new building will go. Um, I hadn't planned to speak this evening, so I don't have a lot to say, a lot of um, prepared remarks. I just, uh, she'd like to convey to you that, uh, the pro that where the house will go if, if the zoning change is approved is directly out of the, the view, out of her front door. Um, right now, it's a very... Um, uh, a very tree lined everything's hidden by trees and bushes and a very green space and putting a new, another house in between the two houses that we're talking about in a new zoned lot would really not fit into the character of the court it would look crammed in everything would be very close together it would look like something you would see in North Oakville not in South Oakville we've we've lived down here uh, for 40 years we bought the house in 1973 and What's being talked about just does not fit into the character of the court, uh, and it, we're also concerned about where where this would lead down the line because the property we have would be ideal for someone to do the same thing to later on. It's a close to a three-quarter acre lot, could easily be subdivided if approved, and it just changes what the court is. Uh, Troy spoke about how he bought the his house because of the character of the neighborhood. And this is just a slippery slope and it just doesn't fit in. Thank you for that. Um, I wonder if, um, would you be aware of any other properties on the court that might also be uh, suitable or susceptible of that treatment? Uh, possibly the one uh, next, the next lot over from the one we're talking about, 104 Ulster. Okay. Would also be a candidate for that. They back up they, uh, that property and ours back onto Lakeshore Road, and so they could be subdivided. There, there was an, two new houses recently built on Lakeshore Road, adjacent to our property, and there was also a property that I uh, believe is owned by somebody by the name of Bristol. I'm not familiar with them, but there was it was recently built in the last ten years, onto Lakeshore as well. So this could become Lakeshore frontage, I suppose. All right, well, that's very helpful. Thank you for that. Okay. And uh, thank you for coming tonight. Anyone else with, uh, in the public with information for council on this item? Not seeing any. Uh, that will conclude the uh, public hearing on this item. And I will look for a recommendation that uh, we receive the information and we'll look forward to a future recommendation from the planning department and a, uh, and a decision to be made at a later Planning and Development Council meeting. Uh, Councillor Johnston moves receipt. All in favor? Opposed to Finney, and that's carried. The next item is our public meeting and recommendation report. 
on the proposed official plan amendment to the livable Oakville plan. So this is a housekeeping collection of, of changes. And uh, we will turn our attention now to Leslie Gilwoods, and she will uh, provide us with a summary of the report that Council's had. <coughs> Ms. Gilwoods, we look forward to your presentation. Good evening. I'm just, I have a corrected presentation. Find. It's not it. Thank you for your concern. <laughs> doesn't help when everybody's looking at you, does it? There it is, the new one. <laughs> oh, where's the slideshow icon? I'm not going to see it. There it is. <laughs> I'm beginning. All right. Good evening, everybody. Thank you. There's been a lot of um, discussions about this item today, so I wanted to get you the most... Um, current information. Tonight I'm here to speak to you about the proposed official plan amendment number one to the Livable Oakville official plan, which is item number three on page 97 of your agenda. I'm going to put that down. The Livable Oakville plan is the town's official plan for all of the land south of Dundas as well as, well as all of the lands north of Highway 407. Because it's an official plan in effect within the town, Council has the ability to amend or initiate an amendment to its official plan. This first amendment of the Livable Oakville plan has been uh, in the works almost since Council first adopted official plan, or since Council first adopted Livable Oakville in June 2009. As we've been using the plan, staff has identified a number of areas where clarity and consistency could be improved and also potent where potential conflicts could be eliminated. A number of these housekeeping issues have been addressed through modifications to the plan, either um, through its approval by Halton Region and then by the Ontario Mis Municipal Board. And now, uh, in, the, in, in the spirit of Council's direction to continuously improve, staff is recommending the approval of the official plan amendment before you tonight to incorporate more changes to the text and schedules of the plan that are of a housekeeping nature. The primary purpose of this housekeeping amendment is to improve the clarity of the plan and by extension to improve the consistency in the interpretation of the document by all of its users. Examples of the different types of changes proposed to the text and schedules of the plan may be found starting on page 99 of tonight's agenda. But I'm going to focus our time tonight on some of the proposed changes that have raised concerns within the community. Council has the option to defer consideration of OPA1, but staff's recommendation is unchanged because it is our belief that the intent of the plan is not altered by the proposed amendment. So I apologize, this stuff is a bit dry. I've, uh, I've copied text from the amendment just so that we can, we're all looking at the, the right place at the right time and we can discuss the issues that have been raised. We received a copy of a letter just today from the Interfaith Council, um, concerned that any changes would be proposed to section seven. And you will remember, of course, that this section was the issue of a lot of discussion through the Livable Oakville hearing process. <clears throat> we don't perceive this change to be an issue. Um, and we tried to reach Rabbi Wise by phone today to discuss it and to clarify that the the addition of the sentence at the end of section 7.1.2H does not change where places of worship can be or may be permitted within the employment area. It simply explicitly states that they are not permitted in the industrial designation. And this is consistent with the language that appears just above this policy in the plan on page C22. And that policy is about educational facilities, and I've copied it for you here, and it's very, it's almost an identical policy structure, and here you see that educational facilities 
are not permitted in the industrial designation. So we're simply proposing to add the same sentence to the end of the policy about places of worship in 7.1.2H. As we work our way through the plan, a concern was raised with the proposed change identified as item 18 in the amendment, and that's in your agenda on page 303. And this um, concern was raised on behalf of Fernbrook Homes, and they um, are not happy with the change, the proposed change from the words shall generally to should in this instance. This change is uh, consistent with a number of changes we've proposed in OPA 1, where we are trying to eliminate the use of the term shall generally, um, and instead replace it with the term should. Uh, staff does not believe that should is more restrictive. Should is in fact defined in section 29.1.9 on page F17 of the plan. And that says that should is directive and requires compliance unless proven otherwise on good planning grounds. In the case of this policy, which was specifically identified as an issue by Fernbrook Homes, the term should is appropriate and is also, um, there's exceptions listed in the subsections A, B, and C. And those would be examples of where um, sidewalks on both sides of the road may be not appropriate. <clears throat> the next issue raised was on behalf of Roxanne Holdings. They are the owner of 1501 North Service Road West. They do not object to the proposed change identified as item 88 in the amendment because that deletes a site-specific policy that's no longer relevant. That was a site-specific policy, you may remember, for Ennisclear Interiors when they had plans to move down the road. Of course, they no longer exist, and there's an operating automobile dealership on the site. So the owner didn't object to this deletion, but um, has requested a site-specific exception to permit their existing automobile dealership use. And I'm pleased to report that the Livable Oakville plan already has a site-specific exception to permit the automobile dealership use at 1501 North Service Road West. And it's on the screen before you now. Roxam, as for Roxam's other properties, making changes to their designations through this housekeeping amendment would not be appropriate. Up next, we have um, concerns raised by a group uh, about a group of amendments or a group of proposed changes in the amendment, and those are identified as items 91 through 94. And they were raised on behalf of five independent schools and two individual property owners. At issue here is the insertion of the term natural features in four implementation policies regarding land acquisition and parkland dedication. And also, um, related to those is the change proposed at item number 104, which um, is simply a clarification of the language um, around submission requirements under environmental considerations. And that is that we can uh, request the demarcation of the limits of any natural features. <clears throat> this change was proposed to, or all of these changes with the insertion of this this term, this term natural features, was intended to improve clarity. It will have no impact on our planning process or, or practice within the, the department. It doesn't change our authority, or, nor does it change the extent of the conservation authority's regulated areas. Uh, another concern was raised about item number 125 on page 335 of your agenda, and that was the, uh, around the relocation of the growth area boundary in Kerr Village to include all of the central business district lands in Kerr Village. So that um, the proposed map change I've included here, and that just the change really just extends this red dashed 
boundary around the lower part of Kerr Village. These central business district designated lands um, have always been on Schedule O, so that is not changing. It's the, the location of the boundary that's changing. Um, there is absolutely no change to the designation and no increase to the amount of land effect, um, affected by the, um, the policies about drive-throughs. And so um, staff do not believe there is any issue with that um, proposed change. Just before I came up here tonight, I was made aware of another letter received today um, objecting to the proposed changes, and I, I don't know the number, um, around the bonusing policies in certain growth areas and the deletion of, uh, what was it, the term, and, dense, and or density. We refer to bonusing policies about, um, they reference height and or density. In the growth areas where there are no density um, policies or um, designations tied to density, we've deleted the and or density reference because it, the bonusing will only have to do with increases in height. The reference to height and or density remains intact and unchanged in the bonusing policies in section F. Um, so staff's recommendation is unchanged from the staff report. And we ask that you approve uh, bylaw 2012-027, which is a bylaw to adopt official plan amendment number one. I'd be happy to answer any questions after the delegations. All right, thank you. Uh, we do have one delegation listed and I will poll the audience for others. Council, do you, uh, shall we proceed in that fashion and then bring questions to staff? All right, uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the listed delegate? Uh, Mr. Blair Taylor is here. Mr. Taylor, welcome. Council looks forward to your information. We've received, I note, a, uh, quite a stack of letters from you. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, with your assistance, I'd just like to clarify the record because, as you'll appreciate, this is quite important that uh, the staff uh, have received letters on behalf of um, Appleby College, St. Mildred's, McLaughlin, Rother Glen, Glen Burney, also Mr. Paul Gardner, Mr. Victor Enns, and Ross Cam Holdings and Buds Mazda. Yep. Thank you. And uh, Your Worship, I'd just like to mention one other um, party. That's Mr. Kamal Sharma. Mr. Sharma was a party uh, in the Livable Oakville process. Uh, unfortunately, I have not been able to get in touch with Mr. Sharma. He uh, travels on business extensively, and I just want to go on the record as indicating that he was a party in Livable Oakville, and uh, he may uh, wish to uh, address this matter, but I'd just like to put that on the record. Um, our request this evening is simply that this matter be uh, deferred for 30 days to allow us to discuss this with staff. In terms of background and context, uh, the public notice was March the 21st. As you may be aware, for a number of my clients, uh, they're on a two-week March break, and so they're uh, not, not in and sometimes not in the country. Um, and as set out in my letter, uh, there are a number of matters that arise dealing with the natural area. And uh, I don't wish to get into substance, uh, but it was not that long ago that we had everything resolved, uh, worked out a settlement. Uh, the Ontario Municipal Board blessed it back in, uh, in the spring of 2011. And now we have uh, new matters that are coming up. And quite frankly, I'm not asking you not to approve this. I'm simply asking that you allow us 30 days to be able to discuss these matters and hopefully uh, resolve our concerns with staff. I was very pleased with Ms. Wood's comment with regard to my client's Bud's Mazda on the North Service Road. I was pleased uh, that there was an exception that's there. I know my client will be happy about that. Uh, that's one I missed. Uh, but I would also note that my client's buds have a number of other uh, dealerships uh, that are uh, in the, uh, the Bronte Road uh, QEW area. And um, in looking at those, that remains a concern. So uh, we would like to have that opportunity to have those discussions with staff. And uh, those are my comments at this time. And I uh, look forward to any questions that you might have. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Any questions? 
Councillor Khan. Thank you. You said that the, the public notice was uh, on March 21st. Have you had any discussions with our staff since then? Or have uh, you attempted to? I, uh, as you will know, uh, Councillor, uh, one of the critical things is that I communicate with my clients first. Uh, and that's uh, been the essence of, uh, of my attempts and I, in, in, uh, with the school break, Easter, I've done my best and I have gotten instructions to be able to say, uh, be aware that this is there. Uh, what, we, what I'd like to recommend is that we have an opportunity to discuss with the staff of the um, eight parties that I've mentioned. I have been successful in communicating with them. I have one party that I have attempted to, but have been unsuccessful in reaching. So I have not had any discussions with staff as of yet, no. But from the other, uh, your other clients, you do have instructions now? Oh yes, and those, those letters were filed to request that. Thank you. Any others, Council? Thank you very much, Mr. Taylor. Thank you. Councilor Elgar? The question of staff uh, regarding uh, Mr. Taylor's uh, request, I uh, went at the appropriate time if staff could respond. I was just going to pull the audience for any more delegations. Are there any more members of the public with information for council on this, Mr. Cheeseman? Thank you. Mr. Cheeseman is the other gentleman who submitted letters for you tonight. All right, um, in that case, Councillor Elgar, your question's in order, and staff are, uh, I, I believe the planning director herself is gonna field your question. Thank you, through your worship, to Councillor Elgar. Um, the nature of, of these amendments are purely housekeeping in nature, and in most cases where we bring forward that type of an amendment, uh, whether it's to the zoning ball or to the official plan, uh, we generally do so with the public meeting and recommendation report at the same meeting, given that most of these, um, if not all of these matters, are very technical in nature. They're clarification. They're adding nothing new. They're actually providing for more clarity and consistency throughout the plan. Um, I do recognize that there are some issues being raised. Um, if it's council's direction to defer this for one cycle, to have the opportunity to further clarify the housekeeping amendments um, to those who have submitted uh, the letters, staff would be more than, than willing to accommodate that. Councillor Elgar. Just, uh, just further to that, do you see any problem if it is uh, d deferred for one cycle? Through your worship, for, for one cycle, no, it would give us that opportunity. Having just received these um, letters uh, today, it would give us that opp opportunity um, to go through them and to uh, further meet with those individuals, or if not with Mr. Taylor, with legal counsel to discuss. All right, thank you. Um, Councilor Elgar moves uh, deferral for one cycle of the item. Uh, Councilor Adams declared a conflict, so he won't be participating. Uh, all those in favor of the deferral? Opposed, if any, and the deferral passes. Uh, that brings us to discussion item number four, the North Oakville East Trails Plan Subcommittee recommendations. And um, uh, let's see, Councillor Elgar, do you want to clarify the alternative recommendation before we go any further? Uh, yes, uh, I would appreciate that. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank staff for the report and the work that's been done on this and also the subcommittee that has been very involved over, over the last few months with uh, the trails. And if you, everyone, if you could turn to page 108 of our agenda, uh, you will see that the, the staff recommendation, which I would like to propose uh, so that everybody can see it. Uh, so on page 108, and I can read it if you would like. It's not a staff recommendation. And it's our recommendation from the subcommittee uh, to, to council. And uh, it, it is that, that staff be requested to report back to a future planning and development council meeting with a revised North Oakville East Trails plan to reflect the subcommittee's vision of first priority is the protection and enhancement of the natural heritage system. Two, that staff consider no trails through the core areas in consultation with Conservation Halton. And three, that Conservation Halton be consulted through the EIR stage. And four, that staff be requested to provide a general sense 
of the number of B trails in the NHS and the specific process for their creation. And uh, I would so move that recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Elgar. Discussion? Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Your Worship. You probably have an idea of what I might be going to talk about. You know, I've searched high and low in this document that's before us this evening, and I still can't see any recommendation or reference to some of the good quality recommendations that came out of the, the MAG report on natural trail standards back in October of 2009. And we talked about those at each of the three committee meetings, and I was sure that I I felt confident that somebody at least said to me, we'll, we'll work some of these uh, concepts into the final report. I can't see anything in here. Maybe I'm missing it. Well, Councillor, you don't have the final report. What you have is the recommendation of the subcommittee you served on. Right. And, and it reads as your fellow subcommittee member just read. So um, I think maybe you're looking in the wrong place. Well, where would I look? In the future report that they're being asked to bring forward. Well, okay, I can, I can, I can accept that then, but, Good. you know, it, it just seems to me, for example, take a look at Appendix A. Uh, well, Appendix A, sir, I mean, what is it? If you're looking for, Councillor, why don't we just take it that all that's before us is a recommendation that Council endorse the subcommittee's recommendations? Okay. Uh, maybe that's what you told me before, and, and I guess that's acceptable, but I'm skeptical, as you can tell, in this particular instance. So I'll support the motion. Thank you. Any others? Councillor Grant, I think. Thank you, and uh, I, I actually just want to uh, add my thanks to that of Councillor Elgar's to staff. Uh, there were a lot of meetings, a lot of people from uh, the public coming out and discussing this, and obviously uh, trails are important to Oakville, and uh, uh, designing the new trails is obviously going to be a, a large task. Uh, I'm sure, and I'm, I'm very certain, in fact, that uh, the MAG report will be included in what we see in the future. But uh, again, uh, I think that it's been a great process, and, and hopefully as we look forward to uh, other works up in North Oakville in the future will have such a great report, great turnout from the public to help us uh, stake out claims for uh, the future areas that we have to deal with in North Oakville. Thank you, Councillor Grant. It was a great process and we did have a very large public turnout. It's a testament to the community engagement and involvement that we benefit from in this town. Um, any other discussion? If not, I'll put the vote for <laughs> Councillor Elgar's uh, motion. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. That brings us to item number five, the old Brawny Road, Calsa Gate Streetscape Plan. And um, we will turn our attention, I believe, to Ms. Ida Wagre. And she will summarize the report that Council has digested. As soon as the technology catches up. Here we go. Your Worship, uh, I, don't, I don't know whether uh, people need the report. I think uh, we've all read the report. I don't know if there's anybody in the public that would need to see it. But uh, we could forego on that if, if, uh, if it's the pleasure of Council. Any member of Council wish to object? Ms. Wagre, thank you very much for being ready. She, she's, she's, not, she's not done yet. I still have a question. <laughs> Councillor Elgar uh, uh, would like to draw you out on the subject. Councillor? Thank you. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for all the work that's been done on this. Uh, it's come a long way uh, over the last, year, well, more than a year. It's been, a, it seems like a, a few years, but uh, I, I think we're at a stage now where it looks good. I only have one question, and what I, I want is an assurance from Planning Services uh, that endorsement of this old Brawny Road Calsa Gate streetscape plan will not in any way comprise the vehicular traffic from 2385 or 2389 Kelsey Gate from using Kelsey Gate uh, for, for full access uh, instead of barren wood. Like I'm just, I, what I would, would not want to see is a report coming forward saying, well, council approved this plan and therefore 
we can't allow ve vehicles to travel uh, from the, those two addresses. And I'd like uh, your comments on that so I can have an assurance to go back to the people. Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, in response to your question, no, it does not preclude or determine the final um, entrance for development applications. This is a high-level land use design plan for the streetscape of Calcegate and Old Bronte Road. So these are design concepts for making the road walkable and pedestrian friendly and usable and functional. So it doesn't contain anything to preclude what happens at a development application level at all. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I would move the recommendation at the appropriate All right. time. Uh, Councillor Elgar has uh, um, moved it, but uh, I just thought I would check and see if we have any delegations on the item. We didn't have any indicated, but are there members of the public with information for Council on this item? I see none. Um, Councillor Elgar has moved the recommendation that the uh, old Brony Road Calcigate Streetscape Plan be endorsed. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, that carries, Councillor. That brings us to the number six, the proposed removal of the holding H provision on Fernbrook Homes at uh, 3047 Lakeshore Road West. And here again, we have a, uh, a presentation from our planner, Rob Thun. Uh, the, um, um, and uh, Council, if you'll give your attention to Mr. Thun. We don't need a presentation. Oh, we have, we have hands from <laughs> Ward 1. <coughs> Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, uh, Councillor Johnson and I both agree that we don't need a presentation other than in a conversation I had earlier today with Director uh, Dana. I would like her to clarify some misunderstandings that may be out there and explain exactly what's happening in layman's language, but we don't believe we need a full-blown presentation. Thank you for being available, Mr. Thun. Ms. Anderson? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to um, Councillors Johnson and Robinson. Um, this matter deals with the lifting of a holding provision on zoning uh, that was approved by the Ontario Municipal Board related to the site. In addition, uh, the Board did approve a draft plan of subdivision um, this site uh, does have a set of draft conditions uh, that address a, a number of issues which I believe some of the residents have concern that we heard earlier that relate to drainage and flooding. All of the draft conditions that have to be met um, to implement the plan uh, require conformity with town standards and would address the residents' concerns. The, the lifting of the H is being recommended to be approved as it relates to two items um, that needed to be required for regional servicing. And both of those items have been satisfied um, and the region has indicated as such. And so we're recommending that the H be removed so the development can proceed. It will, however, have to proceed in accordance with all of the approvals, including the zoning and all conditions of draft plan approval, as well as a subdivision ag agreement. I should also note that site alteration uh, was approved on the site assault alteration permit and it was done so in accordance with all of the town's requirements with respect to grading and drainage. So I hope that clarifies what this process is or is not. <laughs> Councillor? <laughs> Councillor Robinson. Thank, thank you. Just one question. Do you, Your Worship, to uh, the Director. How can we assure the Joneses that was Mr. Jones that spoke to us, that he will not have problems with water flooding. I, I can assure you that there are a number of conditions uh, for draft plan approval that are required. And I'll just note one specific to that that says the owner will be required to design, construct, and have operation all necessary flood control facilities prior to the issuance of any building permit to the satisfaction of development services. So no building shall proceed until such time as all of those requirements have been met to the satisfaction of the town and in accordance with all of the town's storm drainage policies. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, just if I may add further to that, 
I'd be more than happy to meet with Mr. Jones and share with him the servicing plan that has come in for that property, just to demonstrate to him the plan uh, that will be put into place to make sure that that does happen. Thank you for that. I'm sure that it would be uh, interesting to Mr. Jones and, uh, and Mrs. Jones, <laughs> unless I presume too much there. All right. Um, then I'll look for a, uh, if there's no other questions, I'll look for a motion. Um, as, as, it, as it's written in your agenda, except that the bylaw needs to be corrected, it's 1984-63. So could I have a, the, the, this, I, okay, we have a motion from Councillor Johnston to that effect. The recommendation in your agenda with the numerical change that I pronounced. Uh, any questions? All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. Now, that brings us to uh, the recommendation report for the zoning bylaw amendment for 3113 Upper Middle Road. And on this one, I believe we're going to be, uh, Councillor Elgar. Your Worship, on this application also, Councillor Lapworth and I both agree, we ourselves don't need an, uh, a presentation. Are any of your colleagues uh, desirous of a summary of the report they were provided? Mr. McConnell, you too are thanked for having been available. Uh, well, in that case, um, are there any members of the public with information for council on this item? No. So, Councillor, do you have a motion? Yeah, your, your Worship, I'd be pleased to move the staff recommendation. Councillor Elgar <coughs> moves the staff recommendation. Do we have a concern in the clerk's department? No. Yes. She thinks someone signed, but they didn't. We'll just wait and see. The delegation listed is Mr. Capper. Mr. Capper. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll be very quick. Um, David Capper with Weston Consulting, uh, acting on behalf of the owners and applicants this evening. Um, sorry to interrupt your motion. I realize you were very close to approving it, or passing the motion at least. Um, we've read the staff report uh, prepared and reviewed the bylaw in detail, and we're okay and have no comments to submit. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, all right, then. Councillor Elgar having moved it. Questions having been exhausted. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, and that is carried. Then let's turn our attention to the item number eight, the Downtown Oakville Heritage Conservation District Study Status Update. And in this particular case, Council, I beg your attention to the presentation. I think the public would be uh, benefited by it. Uh, Mr. Hanna. Thank you, uh, Mayor Burton and members of Town Council. Uh, the report that you have in front of you is, is simply a status update on the Downtown Oakville Heritage Conservation District Study. It provides um, background on where we've been in the study process, but more importantly, where we are now and where we're going. Um, the preliminary of the, of the study itself has been released to the public. That occurred last Thursday. And we have a bunch of um, public consultation uh, efforts occurring this month in April. Um, I want to emphasize right now that the, the study itself is a draft and it will be over the next several months subject to public consultation and input. What it does at this point is describes and evaluates the, the cultural and heritage value of downtown Oakville study area to determine if the, um, if the area is worthy of or merit of a conservation district. The study itself recommends a district on a portion of the study area. I'm not going to go into that portion, but it is uh, found on, on, as part of the executive summary um, as part of your report. As noted in the report, we did have a series of focus group meetings back in January with, uh, with various interests, being heritage, business, professional, and resident. 
to talk about the issues with the study. And we're going to be meeting again with them on the 18th of this month to go over the study itself and talk about any additional um, uh, comments or concerns they might have. There's also going to be another public information session later this month, uh, April 25th, uh, where it will be a broader uh, community input received. So comments received by the public over the next month or so are going to be considered by staff and the consulting team, and that will form the basis of our recommendation first to Heritage Oakville. That will occur May the 25th in a staff report, and the study will come before you on June the 11th for consideration. I want to emphasize that that decision point for Council at that time in June 11th will not be to actually put in place a Heritage Conservation District. It will be to decide whether we go to the next step, which is pre preparing the district plan and guidelines. So I hope that gives you a little bit of flavor of where we're going over the next few months, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Councillor Duddick has, one, has your first one. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for uh, the presentation and the clarification. Although you've said it, I guess it can't be reinforced enough. There have been no decisions made. Um, this is just purely for discussion purposes and input at this point, so that going to the members of the public provides them an opportunity to respond to what's being presented in the body of the report, correct? That's correct. Okay. And if we have any questions or members of the public have any questions in the interim before that open house, should we be directing them to yourself or Susan or, uh, you Yes, know, there's, been, uh, there's been notice, uh, Councillor Duddick, uh, that has gone out to all of the uh, property owners in the, in the study area and also to the focus group members. And uh, again, Sue Shepard is uh, taking charge of those questions and she can handle them. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor DeMoff? Thank you very much. Um, I, I didn't get this t a chance to read the report until later in the afternoon. Um, but one of the things that I know I had expressed concern to you, and I'm hoping we will be able to do going forward, is, is provide property owners with empirical data on valuation. Um, as you know, I, I support a heritage district and believe it increases value of property, but it's one thing to tell people that and it's another to provide them with, with hard data. So I'm wondering whether or not we will be able to provide that going forward as, as the study carries forward. Thank you, uh, Councillor uh, Damoff. That issue about property value has been discussed at length uh, through the background issues report and also with our focus group sessions. The, the messaging we've been providing to date is on the residential side, the residential districts, there are studies that indicate that property value is not affected. On the commercial side, there is less imperial evidence, although we were, we're certainly looking into that. Um, we're also, at this point in time, talking to other, um, other municipalities who do have commercial heritage districts and also some of the BIAs in, in that area to see what, uh, what their feelings are. But I, I'm not going to promise you empirical data if there isn't anything existing. That's, that's the problem that I have right now. Have, have you talked to any appraisers, though? Because as I had said to you, they, will, they would have those values. Yes, we will and certainly continue to, to look into it. I'm just okay. saying I, I'm not going to promise at this point empirical data if none, if none exists, which is the problem right now. Okay, okay. thank you. All right. Thank you, Councillor DeMoff. Any other questions? All right, then, a motion to receive. Councillor Adams, thank you. All in favour? Opposed to any, that carries. Now, um, shall we jump to Heritage Oakville, leave the confidential item to the very end, and that way we can dismiss Councillor Adams before we turn to it? Councillor Duddock. The Heritage, any discussion? All right then, all in favor? Opposed to any? Um, well, gosh, that brings us very quickly to the confidential item. Councillor Adams, if you still have a conflict on this item, this would be your time to leave. We need a motion to uh, go into camera. Councillor Duddick. And uh, Councillor Duddick has moved that this committee resolve in a closed meeting session for the purpose of dealing with a matter pertaining to litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality and advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege with respect to confidential discussion item C1. And uh, all those in favor? Opposed to any? That carries. And we will now uh, arrange the chamber for a meeting closed to the public.
We now resume the public portion of this meeting of the Planning and Development Council of the Town of Oakville. Planning and Development Council has resolved into a closed meeting session for the purpose of dealing with a matter pertaining to litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality and advice subject to, excuse me, solicitor client privilege with respect to confidential discussion item C1. And I would like now a, uh, a mover for the recommendation that the report from the legal department be received. Councillor Duddock, thank you. All in favor? Opposed, if any, and that carries. Um, if we could have a motion to rise and report at this time. Councillor Robinson, all in favor? Opposed, if any, that carries. I rise and report that the Committee of the Whole has met and made recommendations on consent item one, public hearing items two and three, discussion items four, five, six, seven, and eight, confidential discussion item C1, and advisory committee minutes item nine, as noted by the clerk. May I have a mover and seconder for this report? Councillor Elgar, Councillor Lapworth, thank you. All in favor? Opposed, if any. The report is adopted. Is there any new business of an emergency, congratulatory or condolence nature? Thank you. Could we have a mover and seconder for reading of the bylaws? Councillor Kahn, Councillor Knoll, thank you. Uh, this would be authority for, let me make sure I get the new bylaw number correct. The following bylaws, 2012-21, 22, 26, 27, and 35. All in favor? Opposed, if any. The bylaws are adopted. That concludes our agenda. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, it does not. This authority does not include uh, uh, bylaw 27. That was deferred. So uh, let let the report show that. Uh, that concludes our agenda. Thank you for your time and attention. And uh, it's been great working with you. We are adjourned.